Hello, hello, my baby, hello, my honey, hello, my ragtime gal. So, another pack of old arcade arcade games, and uh, this is Williams. I think this is um, mostly of um, of Midway games again. But I think these are older games than last time. So last time I played, I think they were like um, 16 bit era games. Wait a second. To change the controller. Okay, we've got some intro movie here. Williams. This is not the Williams F1 team, not. Since Williams is such a, a common name, I think there are many Williams companies in the world. Okay, what is this? Oh, this is Joust. We got what this is. Um. Why doesn't it show the name of the game? Let's start with this. Video games, even in the early 80s, took many months, large amounts of money and multiple programmers to complete. Companies frequently gambled their whole existence on the success of or failure of a single project. Well, it's, it's true even today with mobile gaming. Such stakes in other industries might result in conservative product strategies, but being conservative with new video games was like signing a death warrant. Kids then now want a new surprise every time they enter the arcade, and if you don't give it to them, some other company will. This was the atmosphere in 1982 when Williams decided to gamble on a fighting game with no fire button. Just. Well, in today, I think most of the games are like copycat games. So yeah, they either resemble uh, some puzzle diamond, diamond games or Angry Birds or they are just Fortnite clones. Matter battle royale or building games. Call it a calculated risk. Williams must have had some blind faith in John Newcomer, the young ex toy designer who conceptualized Joust. They knew what they were getting with John. After all, he submitted his res resumes stuffed down the throat of a rubber chicken. <laughs> there were lots of skeptics at Williams once Joust began. Begun. As far as just gameplay conventions went, newcomer lead programmer Bill Sendry Router and the rest of the crew were going for a wildly different approach, so starting to become a habit at Williams. 
biggest concern was the absence of firing. Fiat Williams expected the game with no shooting to do well. Joust consisted of flying combat with no projectiles and a funny control called Flap. Flap button which was unlike anything ever seen in an arcade game. Newcomer and his team turned Joust into a high concept strategy game that stretched the limits of the machine's memory, not only with the gameplay but with artwork too. Just Oh Compared to now, <laughs> we're we're working with uh, uh, bubble gum and rubber bands and <laughs> and hot glue. <laughs> Essentially, it, it, the the memory in the game was, I believe, 96k, which is just nothing. <laughs> now, I mean, we <laughs> we waste that on title screens <laughs> nowadays. You know? um, so the. The real challenge in designing games back then was how do you do something interesting with some nice animation and how do you do it in such a small package because that doesn't allow us a lot of variety. Alright, just utilized essentially the same color raster scan monitor and multiboard electronic system that Williams had pioneered with Defender. Star Trek Journal a technical magazine for the amusement industry described this system as somewhat re revolutionary. It showed that the future did not belong to the XV or vector monitors used in popular games like Tempest and Asteroids. Okay, well, um, this just goes and goes on and on and on and on. So, if you are interested in the game background, Wanna find a wanna footage of this? So, um, okay, let's play the game. Emulator. So I'm playing emulator inside an emulator. I have never played Joust. Or left flap flap. Easy enough. L1. Okay. No. R1. Oh, I see. This is like a balloon fight.
that's missing is balloon fight music Birds at the same same hit. Last life. Thy game is over. Yeah, I played quite sloppily there. Let's play another round. Collision detection is rather weird here. But you know, it's a, it's a so old game, so. It's natural that it's not perfect. It seems that uh, when you hit the ceiling or side of the. Uh, you bounce quite heavily. Sometimes when you head collide on with the computer, you don't know who's gonna fail, who's gonna die. Uh, usually, it, usually it's you who will suffer the most damage if you do a head collision. Additional enemies there. If you don't create a level fast enough, so those birds will appear. Let's have one more. I think uh, I'm getting better. Come on, come on, come on. Nice. 
Funny how fast uh, the mice ostrich walks. Whoa, they have become fast. didn't kill him, so he got another life. There goes the bird. so fast now. I don't have a chance. Come on, get it! What the fuck is your problem? Oh my, it's like... It's like New York traffic there. Just, um, I think I still prefer a balloon fight because it's uh, it has slower pace and uh, it's not so difficult. Let's see the other clips. There was a, there was a bug when we first. Uh we're working on the flying and the running of the uh, of the ostriches, and um, we had neglected to consider is when the uh, ostrich lands on some of the floating cliffs. Of how's that handled? When does the animation uh, call the uh, the running leg and the and then the non leg flap sequence? Um, so there's a lot of situations where. The ostrich is there's the the cliff is floating and the ostrich will be flying, but he's not high enough to to uh, show his legs, so it'll just do a belly flop across the cliff. And on the one side of the screen, uh, we had two cliffs that were staggered, and uh, when he does a belly flop, there's a little hole of a couple of pixels, and it allows the uh, the bird to to squeeze out between uh, between the uh, the two cliffs. And we're <coughs> we're racking our brains trying to fix it, but we were so embroiled in playing cutthroat where we would try to kill each other when 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 we were playing and testing the game, and it became a really 
fun trick to do is that someone would be hovering underneath these cliffs and then you'd deliberately do the belly flop and squirt out and kill the guy underneath. And so we decided to, to keep that in there and call it a feature. Okay. <laughs> no, it, notice that glitch there. One thing that was a real frustration for me was uh, I, I like to pride myself in thinking of all the little details. And when Joust originally came out, there was a nasty pterodactyl bug where a, a player could stand on the middle edge and, and, just, and just hold his position, and the mouth of the pterodactyl would hit right into the, into the lance, and you could play the game almost infinitum. Um, I never could. I, for some, I'm just too slow, I guess. But um, a lot of really good players, when we first sent the game out uh, to manufacture, could do that, and that really that really ticked me off because um, I had taken every character. I had a grid paper of how big all the characters were. I mapped out what the intelligence, the, the flight patterns of all the, the birds and the pterodactyls were so that nothing like that would, would happen where there'd be a, an infinite bug like that where you could just keep playing the game forever and ever. Hmm. Interesting. Joust the movie is uh, it's a, a little hobby I've been working on. Um, I guess the, the, the transition is I started off as a toy designer, then I became a uh, video game designer, and then I would like to become a, a movie designer. So I had always thought that Joust would make a great movie. Um, the technology was never there for what I had in mind, but now it's more than there. I don't think there's a Joust movie. I have to see what the John Newcomer is doing nowadays. To check Wikipedia. Right, yeah, right now the, 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 video, the old video games are, are being gobbled up by, by collectors and, and in people's basements, but the, um, the prices are just starting to, to rise on some of them. You, you can still get a lot of old games pretty cheaply. And nowadays you have to pay hundreds of dollars for some some uh, Nintendo games. That's ridiculous. So if you want to start collecting games nowadays, I suggest to stay on emulators. I've been looking for a uh, an original Joust cocktail table, of which there are there is, even though Joust did really well, we only made about 500 cocktail tables, and it was it was really too bad because it was one of the originals. It uh, uh, it was the only two-player uh, simultaneous side-by-side -side cocktail game that was made, so it had a unique look because at the time most. Uh, uh, all the other cocktail tables like Pac-Man and Ms. Pac-Man, one person sat on one side, the other sat on the other, on the other opposite, and then the screen flipped around. Well, this was, this played just like the, the regular Joust because you're both sitting next to each other and, this, and the screen didn't flip. So um, I'd always <coughs> regretted that I didn't get one for myself, so I finally found one and, and uh, and did some trades here and there, and I paid about five hundred dollars for it. But uh, I would say they're probably worth more than that now. Joust Two is the trivia question of all time, I guess. Was that there actually was a sequel? Um, we we tried to resurrect Joust um, in 1985. Um, didn't make many games, but we. This is at a time when very few um, video games were selling, and there wasn't much of a video department anymore. And uh, they had met with uh, you know, some of management. We were trying to figure out, well, gee, let's let's try another game. And um, so we were considering resurrecting and doing a sequel of of either Robotron or Joust. And um, they decided to let's let's give Joust to crack at it. 
Do they mention a balloon fight at all here? It by the Super Mario Brothers. No. I don't think they even like uh, like uh, sued Nintendo. The game was different. The game was different enough. Even though it was basically the same game. Balloon fight. It just... Just followed the formula. I think, uh, yeah. If there was never a... Never a sequel. You may call that balloon fight a sequel for just. So next game is Defender. No, Robotron. Never played this one either. Ooh, trippy. So this is the same same folks behind this game as well. Ooh, up, down, fire, right, left, down. Save the last human family. Inspired by his never-ending quest for process, in 2084 man perfects the robot trance, a robot species so advanced that man is inferior to his own creation. Guided by the infallible logic, the robot trance conclude the human race is in killed. You are the last hope of mankind. Due to genetic engineering error, you possess superhuman powers. Your mission is to stop the robot trance and save the last human family. Okay, so it's like uh, Terminator before Terminator. Oh, I have to save those human people. Hey, Mrs. Oh, I can collect them. Whoa, that's trippy. Where am I? I couldn't save anyone. It's bad. Did I fail? Did I... Where am I? Okay. So busy with the graphics. Oh, I hit one of those blocks. Oh, I hit one of the... Robotrons. Okay. Well, yeah, you have to you have to remember that you start from the from the center of the screen. You had a red red head and white overall, overalls. Let's try to save her. And these these ones shoot you. The other, other ones will. Oh, crap. Too close. Come on. Okay, no human left. 
Okay, one more time. What is this music? Is this... Blah. Usually they would use uh, some public domain classical music in old video games. I can shoot diagonally. Good to know. Oh, hit by a projectile. Okay, who's left? Him. Jesus. Where am I? Oh. I'm dead. Escape this way now. Okay, one more time. Save her. It got crowded here. Don't you think? It's funny that uh, those people, they, they don't care at all. They're like, they're just casually walking, getting killed. Like I'm getting better, although, although I doubt I think I can reach level three. Of here. Come on. Okay, well, this is the best I can do. Let's see the interviews. Come on, come on. Exit.
The Inside Story of Robotron 2084. It fe- if it were po- possible to reach Sen Nirvana through hand eye coordination, the, then a Robotron would be the ultimate instrument. A good Robotron player on a roll is a thing of beauty. Two jo- joysticks against the world. No scrolling, no magic phone generator off screen. All the advers- adversi- adversaries present an attacking from the world word go. It's best to turn off your thinking brain and let instincts take over. You must succumb to a hyper kinetic state of meditation if you want to defeat Robotron. Okay. <laughs> Very poetic description of the game. The controls were totally uh, one of a kind at the time, and, and they've hardly been used ever since. Uh, you know, Eugene really, uh, you know, wanted to give you that monster control, and and part of the, you know, one of the really adrenaline rushes in the game as a result of, of the amount of power you have. You've got so much power and control that you, that the game. Yeah, the controls are similar to Smash TV, and, and I think it, and it's even. That keeps people coming back to it over and over. You could say it's the. Precessor, precessor of uh, Smash TV. It's just the endless enemies coming at you, and you have to like to use 360 decrease of, of uh, killing everyone. I think they will soon realize that humans are nasty little things. You know, they're 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 trying to blow up things. They they got car bombers. They got nuclear terrorists. You know. All these mass murderers, you know, all these nasty little habits that humans have, you know, create wars, threaten to blow up the world, you know, endangering the entire planet. I mean, it's clear that humans are psychos. And for their own protection, you know, we'll have to be confined in, in, in safe zones. There were some games in that period that uh, were producing either low numbers or not at all that, that most of the audience probably hasn't had a chance to see. Um, some low production games were Mystic Marathon, um, Turkey Shoot, Inferno. Um, those three were, they were tested and then there were some number built of each of those models and they can be found in collectors' hands but the, the quantities are limited. Then there were games like uh, Playball, Speedball, um, there's at least one other um, that were fully developed and tested but were never put into production and there are no uh, games in collector's hands. I have the only existing play ball sitting in my office. What happens is the brains, their algorithm which was supposed to be seeking out the closest human and then go and reprogram them. That was supposedly their algorithm. Something got screwed up which Actually, I never really looked into it. Didn't really want to know because it was working good. But <laughs> they all turn out they seek. They initially will seek the first um, human, which, in the case of the first brainwave, is Mikey. There's one Mikey, and there's all these other mommies, and so they're all going for Mikey. If you can keep Mikey alive, don't pick him up, and don't allow the brains to kill him. If you can keep him alive then the brains will continually try to seek him and they won't program any of the other mommies. And so in that that situation, you can basically kill all the brains, but you have to leave one left so that the wave doesn't end. And this is the horrible thing is that so often you'll like kill the last one or it'll be a grunt will be left or something and then it'll run into like an electrode, you know, before you've picked up this treasure trove of points, which is all your humans are just waiting out there and you just, you, you, you wait for one turn, you want to pick them all up in one turn so you can turn them all into five thousands. But if you somehow blow it, then um, then you get nothing. Okay, I didn't know that you get the bonus percent. We also had a sequence where you can, you know, play with the controls and out comes a copyright message with Eugene's and my name on it. Um, it's in both Stargate and Robotron. The Robotron sequence I know off the top of my head, the Stargate one I have written down. It's, it's the, the Robotron one. Okay, it, it's three, each of the sequences are three 
three combinations of buttons being pressed. And you have to do combination one, and then within a quarter of a second, when you let go of combination one, you have to be on combination two within a quarter of a second. Then when you let go of combination two, you have to be on combination three within a quarter of a second, and you have to do all this without dying in gameplay. Um, it's not difficult on a Robotron. It's much harder on the digital Eclipse version, but I have done it. Um, it doesn't matter how long you sit on each combination, but when you let go of the combination, you have a quarter of a second to be on the next one. Combination one is move right, fire up, and press the player one start button. Combination two is move up, fire down, and press the player two start button. That is the two player start. And then combination three is move down, fire up, and you hold the fire up, up, and it'll hold the message on. When you let go of the fire up, the message goes. Really? I have to find a YouTube clip showing that I'm not going to try it. Um, I've got a Robotron down in my basement. And, and it's like, every now and then, I just have to go down and kick its butt. I mean, it's just, I've got to, you know, just kick its butt. And unfortunately, if I haven't played in a while, I'll get down there, and it'll just humiliate me. Now, every, every Robotron player that's really into it and these days plays it at 10. You have to play the total maximum difficulty. Otherwise, it's, you can just play it forever and it's not interesting. But at 10, it is a real nasty, mean game. And it takes you maybe an hour or two just to get warmed up. You know, the game will just kick your ass, and humiliate you, and you'll get 80,000 or 100,000 or 150,000. You're just, you're just crying out. And you just, you just like want to kill it. You're grabbing the game by the joysticks, and you're just shaking it and slamming it on the wall. 80,000. Eventually, you get to the point. It's getting like, like 10,000. Warming up for a basketball game or something. You get to the point. You're sweaty, and you've got this kind of attitude. You cannot win unless until you have this this attitude, this total mindset of just total concentration and total rage. You've got to be. <laughs> Well, I, I could imagine that if I had, like, no other game, I would play this for hours, and then, eventually, and obviously I would get better, so, you know, but I'm not, I'm not going to play any of these games more than a few min minutes. When you're on, it's just such a thing of beauty, you know, we just, you, you'll, you'll get on a roll, and you'll just like be cleaning off wave after wave after wave of them. And you're just like, ah, yeah. But inevitably, you like start getting lazy. And you'll start getting too cocky. And then before you know it, you'll just like lose four or five guys in a row. And you're in some horrible situation. And the quarks are just like keep multiplying and keep putting out tanks. So the spheroids just keep putting out enforcers. And you kill out a few and they keep putting out more. And, and, and then again, you have to buckle down and, and you know, get back to it. And somehow conjure up that rage from within you, you know, to keep going, you know, and, and it's kind of the cycle of, of conquest and then of getting your butt kicked and then of, of going back and keep coming back. And, and if you can stand this for like a few hours, um, you can reach a million points. Um, and I understand now there's, that, that's kind of my personal ambition. I mean, there's players that, have, that do five or ten million. Um, million. But my personal thing is like to do Jesus. a million. And I don't think I've quite achieved that even yet to this day. I've had like a 900,000. I've had several 900,000 games, and somehow at 940,000, I'll just get weak in the knees, and I just like I won't have it, you know. And I just like I'm I'm watching helplessly, you know. I've just you know I, maybe I'd had a run of 100,000 points on a previous guy, but for some reason I'm just sitting here and I'm I'm helpless and I'm crumpled, but I'm I'm just a I'm just like a sweaty limp dish rag, and something I can't get over that million point barrier, but that that's still my my, my personal ambition. I know someday I'm going to kick that game. <laughs> you know, I'm going to kick its butt. I'm going to beat it. And, you know, until then, the basement appointments will continue. Million points. Well, <laughs> now, in fact, I, I want to try again. I'll try to get the million points.
So you cannot change the settings or difficulty here. As that the arcade party pack allowed you to change the tip settings. Okay. So keep Mike alive. What's going to happen? Okay. Mike's dead. myself immediately. Thirty one thousand. So he said that he would get like one hundred thousand for with one guy. Unbelievable though. Yeah. They were expected. They were experts. I'm not, I'm a newbie. I'm a casual gamer. The hardcore one. Anyway, I think that's enough for today. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.